Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Dion for another episode of Wuxia Weekend. And tonight we're going to be talking about the Jackie Chan film Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, uh, directed by Yuan Wu Ping. Uh, this is the film that came out right before Drunken Masters, 1978. And Drunken Masters is actually kind of a cast sequel of this film. Um, but this is a movie that I saw before Drunken Master. So this is like, the, to me, this is like the original Jackie Chan film that I that I really remember seeing the first time. Um, and Dion, I believe, hasn't seen it yet. And we've been dipping our toes into Jackie Chan waters because Dion doesn't always have a good reaction to Jackie Chan. And we're trying to find out, just out of curiosity, if there are certain types of Jackie Chan movies that she likes more than others. Um, I know that you've said that you like the ones that he made over here more usually, right? Is that the, has that been the only pattern that we've noticed? Well, yeah, that was the, that's what I was introduced to, the Rush Hours mm-hmm. and the Shanghai Noons. That's where I was introduced to Jackie because most of the time when I was growing up, the movies that I saw on uh, TV were Shaw Brothers films. Okay. So I I don't remember seeing very many, if any, outside of Shaw Brothers on okay. our Kung Fu uh, Saturdays. Okay. Yeah, this is one. I don't know. It's uh. Well, I'm curious. What? How'd you feel about this one before we even go anywhere? What was your, what was your reaction to it? Because it, it this I want to say this one is I. This is one that. I didn't know how you would react to it because it, it's not very, it's not like a high budget Jackie Chan film. You know, I mean? it doesn't have a big budget feel. It's a little bit offbeat in a lot of ways, and it's it's definitely not as sleek as Drunken Master, which follows it. But uh, but I, so I was curious how how you'd react to everything. Well, I actually like this one mm-hmm. um, compared to the other Jackie Chans that we've done. Okay. Um. The only other one that I like that we've done has was what was it the bodyguards where it was a period oh, yeah. piece. Yeah, so, I like this one much better because it it has the the feel that I'm used to. It's more of a it's not as modern as a police story, and there aren't the guns and yeah. all the slapstick comedy in it that depending on my mood can hit me the wrong way. So, you know, this was a good choice. Yeah. I mean, it's a Kung Fu comedy. It's like got all the elements of a good Kung Fu movie and it's got a lot of humor in it. And it definitely is not, you know, it's not like a yeah, police story doesn't have the, the emphasis on martial arts, like a movie like this does or martial arts schools and rival schools. And, and you know, the, the thing that I really liked about this movie when I first saw it was that there were that that you instantly know there's these two rival groups and one of them is just trying to wipe out the other one. He just wants to destroy anybody who knows the snake style so that he can uh you know so that the eagle claw style can be dominant. And I don't know that it's very simple, but it's also uh it's also kind of an interesting uh, I don't know, like landscape for these characters to live in or the way yeah, that Marshall. I enjoyed how it wasn't just those two distinct schools, but then you brought in two, two other schools where yeah. you're not exactly sure what Kung Fu they're teaching because their teachers are so bad Yeah, <laughs> that you're like, um, what is going on here and who would allow them to teach anybody anything? And that's where a lot of the humor comes in. But yeah. I like how it's like two major schools that are trying to, well, one's trying to wipe the other one out. The other one's just trying to survive. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the other two provide for the comedy because those two schools, I I wouldn't send my children or anybody I knew to those. Yeah. No. And, and I think those schools, they also provide the, the function of indicate, like they just let you know, like that, like there, there are, there are schools like this around and that they're part of the same martial landscape that the, that the rival sex are part of and that they're all sort of important or significant in some way to the point that like a local magistrate is trying to enroll one of his sons in one of the two local schools. And he's really, you know, debating which one to send him to. And he goes and visits both in order to vet them, you know? So it's, um, I don't know. I, I, I like, I like, I like the simplicity of the way it's done where you just have these, you know, these that most of the movie takes place at these two schools, really. 
and and you know at like a you know in, and in the woods during the training sequence or in the fight sequences but it's it's a really kind of simple setup um how did the humor land for you dion in this one was the humor good or was it the, the humor was really good for me um i liked the um there were parts where they had uh, humor during the fight scenes. Like one guy ends up with chopsticks up his nose and another ends up getting his teeth beaten out with chopsticks. Um, and some of it was just during chores, you know, the Jackie Chan's character trying to keep the, and I put in quotes teacher because he's not really good. Um, is trying to just stay out of his way, but the teacher is trying to create all kinds of trouble for him while he's doing his chores. And I thought those were the funny parts. The the teacher's like this really weaselly, larger than life, layabout kind of guy. He's like smoking and, and just you know the, the 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 master of the school's away, and so he's just totally abusing his position and being it, it, bullying Jackie Chan's character. Uh, to a degree that's you know, yeah yeah very merciless and and certainly when the teacher returns you're assuming that it's not okay what he's doing um but i love that the characters are all very you know they're all larger than life like that they're all stark and you know it, you, you know the 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 actor playing him just kind of you know really eats up the whole character it's, you know he just he's just uh you know unapologetically lazy and bad dude, and just seems to be mm-hmm. selfish and you know he, he he takes pleasure in tormenting jackie chan's character that seems to be one of his his priorities through the day so and money he seems pretty greedy too because yeah he, he makes a point about how they have to pay the fees in order to before they learn their lesson um so yeah i like I, the humor in this i think is wonderful now i saw originally the version that i that that like that, that like is the version I think of as the version of it or as like that the original is the dubbed one and and I don't know which one you watched for this but I, w- I watched a subtitled one for this uh, episode I watched a dubbed one oh okay on so you YouTube. all right I, so the subtitles some of the stuff comes off as a little bit less silly sometimes because the the dub version the acting is ridiculous in points and that itself becomes a source of humor yes. But the dubbing for me really, I don't know, I just associate those voices with the characters. So when I see it subbed, it's a little bit, you know, it, it doesn't pull me in quite as much. But but some of the things that people might get annoyed by in the dub version aren't as prevalent in the subbed version. Um, but uh, but I do like a lot of the dubs, like the scene where the there's that rush, the, the Russian fighter. And he, yeah, and he says, I'm a, a priest. Yeah. And he says, I'm a, a you know, I'm a, a fighter from Russia. And he, and he says it with like a really bad accent. And it just, uh, I don't know. I, 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 that, that scene always stuck out of my head because of the dubbing. Do you know what I mean? So it was a uh-huh. case where the dubbing sort of branded it in my head. Um, but I, I don't know. I think the comedy in this is really, really good. And it also, I like that it never really compromises on the martial arts front. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like I think I like a lot of movies that blend genre with comedy and usually the genre that they're blending in suffers. Do you know what I mean? Like if you think of like, what was the, what was the mafia movie that, uh, was the parody? Do you know the one I'm talking about? The, uh, the, there were, there was a parody of mafia movies made many, many years ago and, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, and, 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 they, and I think it was mostly making fun of casino if I remember, but the, the the mob genre suffers at the expense of the comedy. Do you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's not, you know. It, 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 whereas here, this this has all. This is this is like an authentic kung fu movie. Do you know what I mean? It's got all the stuff right. that kung fu needs, and all the martial arts in the movie are are really well done. It, they just look good. The performances are good. Like the the, the villain is. I, I I I I love the way that he fights in this movie. The villain, and you know, and I and I love the evolution of Jackie Chan's character and how he, uh, how he, um, how, how this movie has something in it that just encapsulates what I love about the genre, which is the hero has to find a way to work around this seemingly invincible style. And, right. and it happens by accident, kind of like in the, um, Shaolin Mantis movie where he sees a cat fighting a snake 
and he realizes, oh, okay, you know, I can, you know, and, and, and it's funny, in, in some versions, they seem to cut out the part where the cat kills the snake, and in other versions, they don't, but there's supposed to be an extended sequence in there where the, the cat and the snake are fighting, and that's where he develops his, his cat claw style, which ends up being the snake and the eagle's shadow style. Um, so I was just curious what you thought of the the cat kung fu part of the movie, because it, it it's definitely done for laughs. You know, it's, it's 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 done in a very unique way. Well, I enjoyed the cat kung fu because I am a cat owner, and I believe the cats are very smart. Um, so no, I enjoyed it, and I guess because it takes a lot of physicality to be able to pull off that style and Jackie is such a great physical actor and you know he really puts his whole body into it so it really came to life I thought mm-hmm. with um, with this and also I the snake style I looked it up this movie came out before the Venoms did uh, mm-hmm. this one came out in March and the Venoms came out in um August and okay. I'm wondering if they had some inspiration from this movie because there were some similarities that I noticed. I mean, it seems possible because this was a big movie. I think when it came out, I think it was quite a hit. Um, so, but I don't know. I don't know if there's an actual causal link there, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, me either. I might have to ask a certain person. Yeah, you might. Yeah, actually, yeah, you have the you have the line to that information. So if you get if you get the opportunity, you should ask that question. I think that would yeah, that'd be an I interesting. Yeah, remember one. the next time we we talk. Yeah, that would be you know don't you know obviously don't you know push it, but I would love to know the answer to that. What did you think of the intro, the intro with the the form at the beginning of it? The very beginning of the movie yeah. was awesome. It really yeah. set the tone for what I was expecting from the rest of the movie. Um, I think Huang Zheng Li is such an awesome actor and fighter on screen. And it was just, I don't know. It set for me, it set the tone as being more of a serious movie with comedy mixed mm. in and not necessarily, you know, comedy with Kung Fu set in. Yeah, so when I saw that, I was really happy that that's the kind of movie it was because everyone always says how great this movie is. Mm-hmm. But then some of the people that I look at that say it's such a great movie have a completely different taste in film than I do. So, that, you know, that opening fights. Now, I was actually talking about the intro with the the snake form at the beginning. But let's talk about this first, because I do think this is probably more interesting. Um, the that opening fight sequence, I thought. Uh, see, that was then that was cut off in the version that I saw. Oh, I didn't see the opening with the. Oh, you didn't see that. I just the, remember the, the when. Maybe I was doing something and came in late, but when I started watching it, it had just uh, Huang Jang Ling and... Um... Oh, okay. There, There's a whole introduction. There's a, one of those... It's one of those scenes where they do, like, the extended snake form at the beginning of okay, the movie. Okay, and does uh, it, like, have, like, a red screen behind or something? Yeah, like, something like that. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. I'll have to go back and watch it. Yeah, that. I'll, 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 I'll send you the link if, if yours didn't have it, but... um. Uh, but either way, that that opening fight sequence I think is great because it's like you said it, it it establishes this is a serious situation. There's no jokes that I can really think of in that scene, and no. the bad guy is ferocious. He kills him with a kick. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. doesn't he kill him with a kick? And I remember at the time that I saw this, I remember thinking, you know, like that is like something about kicking a guy and killing him that way seemed just like a really interesting choice to me. Do you know what I mean? It just, it, 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 uh, it, that's always, it's always been a scene that stands out in my mind. Cause it, it just was like a, uh, I don't know. It was just a particularly lethal kick. I don't quite know how to describe it. There's just like, there's a viciousness to the style and the way that he finishes with the kick. I just really like that about the character. And I like the, uh, I like the way that it works in that opening scene. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And when uh, I was watching it, I was, wondering because it was snake in the eagle's shadow and 
we didn't see snake form right away. So I was like, well, why is this movie called this? Because mm. usually when movies open up, if there is an animal in the title, you see it right away. And yeah. because I missed the very opening of it, I didn't see that part. So I'm mm. sitting here thinking, why is this called this when he's obviously using Eagle Claw? I know the difference. So, you know, it took a while until I was properly introduced later to figure it out. So, that, but yeah. That snake form introduction, by the way, that is the reason why I am so into any movie that has an intro where they're playing some kind of interesting music and they're doing an interesting martial arts form or right. some kind of demonstrative sequence that's usually in like a, you know, there's like, usually it looks like it's on a stage with a color background of some kind. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love those kind of openings because of this movie. Because I remember when I first saw it, it just kind of captivated me. I think because of the music and the fact that you're just focused on all the physical movements that he's doing. You know that they're important to the movie. So it 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 just it just gets the whole snake style in your head, which I think mm-hmm. is good. Which would explain why when you when the scene opened up and you hadn't had that, you were, you were kind of like a little bit thrown off maybe because it wasn't it wasn't like made crystal clear to you from the beginning because right. you didn't have that 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 preparation. Um, what what did you think of the the snake style? in the movie because that you know that is a big part of the film how'd you feel about snake style here i thought it was it was excellent and deadly um and it it seemed like it should have been more of a match for the eagle's claw than it was i to me i shouldn't have been you shouldn't have had to combine it with another style Mm -hmm. to beat out eagle's claw but that wasn't the premise of the movie but i liked it well and i think kind of what they were going for was there was something a little bit not terribly vicious about the snake style dude it was a little bit more not friendly but just more benign than the and the eagle style seemed to be very have lethal intent behind everything in it. Do you know what I mean? And so... But I, I want to disagree with that because okay. I think it was more of who was using the technique that makes it that way. That's probably because, right. That's probably right. Go um, on. The, the people using Eagle's Claw were definitely more ferocious and were out to kill... And then um, Snake, they they were just trying to survive. And yeah. he didn't even want Jackie's character to use it unless he absolutely necessarily needed to use it, even if it meant that he was being... Because remember, he had Jackie promise to not use the style even if he was fighting someone... And I assume if that meant he was losing also, yeah, that he was yeah. not to show that he knew it. So it was more of the Eagle's Claw was more deadly because they were using it in a more ferocious way. Mm-hmm. And the snake so- style didn't appear to be as ferocious because they were using it to survive. No. Okay, no, that's fair, because when I think about it, like, the number two, the lieutenant in the group, he perished at the hands of, of was it Teacher Lee? And, um, or not Teacher Lee, who, who was the, who was the, what was the master's name? Pai, Pai Cheng Tian, right? That right. was his name. Um, he perished at the hands of Pai, uh, Pai Cheng Tian, and, 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 it, and, and I remember, you know, this time around when I was watching that scene, thinking, yeah, it, it kind of does come down to the practitioner, of the style because you know obviously that guy wasn't as deadly as the master so i I think you're right there um but uh the the other the other thing about it that i that i was i was curious about was um was your feeling about the magistrate and his son the i I wanted to know how you know because i mean they're not really that i i don't know why they seem such like they're not that central to the movie they're they're not big big parts, but those scenes I always think about when I think of this film. They, they stand out to me for some reason. 
because they stand out to me too. And I think it's because it's this fat kid that the father doesn't want to be a pansy, Mm -hmm. but he wants the best school for him, but they're not using proper criteria to choose the best school. The kid just basically wants to know how many bricks can you break. Yeah. You know, that's the his top criteria for being um, a school. And then they keep switching back and forth, going between the two schools and not realizing that the teachers that are at the school are so inept that he's really not learning anything. Yeah. Um, so they're they're basically fools in the movie, but they help the story move along so that it so that you can get the the feeling that neither of these two schools is worthwhile they just have maybe one champion in yeah. each school and that kind of brings in the people i guess but they they provide some of the comedy which was good no yeah no i i agree i i i i think they also kind of they help give you a window into the schools and the, the culture at the schools. Do you know what I mean? They're sort of mm-hmm. how you, that's really where you start to see just how deceptive a lot of the people at these different schools are, because you see the, the teacher who he, the guy who's going to break the brick and he obviously shouldn't be breaking like the, 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 the chubby kid says, you know, no, no, I want to put, I want you to break three bricks. And he puts two more bricks on top of them. And he looks at the, the the headmaster and the headmaster, you know, nods. But it's obvious this guy shouldn't be attempting this. And then, you know, he breaks the bricks, but he immediately has to run in the back room and, you know, put medicine on his hand. And then that's the, uh, you know, when he comes out to shake hands with the with the, the magistrate and his son. That's when they realize that, oh, you know, this school's no good. And they go to the other one. And and the other school uses similarly deceptive, pra- uh, deceptive practices. They 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 have. Uh, you know, one fighter beat up another where the other one isn't resisting at all so that right. it looks like it's tremendous. And, uh, and and Jackie Chan's character is usually the punching bag for that, which is sort of central to the movie. And I think I think one of the things that makes... makes one of, the, one of the reasons I like this movie so much is the heart. Do you know what I mean? The, um, mm-hmm. the, his character is very sympathetic. He's, he's not particularly fleshed out, I don't think, but he's still, you know, the way Jackie Chan plays him... And the fact that he's kind of like a, he kind of reminds me of Goa Jing from Legend of Condor Heroes, where he's simple minded, but pretty virtuous. And, you know, he, he always, he always does the right thing, but he's easily deceived and, uh, but he has a good heart. And I don't know if he's easily deceived. I just think he doesn't want to rock the boat. He's an orphan and he mm-hmm. just has nowhere else to go. And, you know, if he could go somewhere else, he would have. I don't think he would have stayed and been the punching bag. But since he feels that he owes the master, and probably when the master, the real master is not there or is there, he's probably not the punching bag Yeah, like he is when the master goes away because they were so brutal with him. And then, you know, the real master comes back and the real master is seems to be a more generous understanding kind of person, the person that you want to stay for. Yeah. But because, you know, his two teachers are, um, and I did air quotes again, are just mean and inept. Then he just has to deal with those times that he goes away, and you yeah. just hope the master doesn't go away often, so that he's not beaten up all the time. But it, you could tell it was a regular practice that he was beaten up when the master was away. Yeah, and he and he does this thing too, where you know he'll be humiliated, and then he'll kind of run away, cr- almost crying, like at least two or three times in the movie, mm-hmm. uh, which is the thing that ends up leading to the old man and him having you know that the relationship that they have. Um, and I don't know. I just, I just think there's something sweet about him and the master, and you know the the way that they end up being master and student. And and then I think it kind of goes deeper than that. To me, it was almost a father son kind of relationship yeah. because he gets to pass his kung fu on to someone that's not just a student, but someone that he really 
seemed to care about and who really seemed to care about him. Yeah, yeah. And also he's somebody who like was, you know, going out of his way to help the old man even when he didn't necessarily need to. to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's he's just like, and uh, uh, one of the other things I want to talk about, there's this big plot twist in the movie. There's a guy who's like the friendly cook throughout the film and they kind of hint at it as the movie goes on but uh but it also kind of in some ways comes out of nowhere as well do you know what i mean because when you think right. about when you think about the elaborate scheming going on where this guy is sort of hidden in this one school it's like well what you know that that it seems a little bit it stretches it strains credulity a little bit but i think it's wonderful the way that it's done and you know he he tries to poison the two of them before they go to face the big bad in the film, the, um, uh, the, the, the head of the Eagles, the, but the I Eagle. like how you don't find out who it is until after the big bad is killed. Because yeah. I was expecting him to be unmasked before then. And then the fight with the big bad was going to be the end, but no, they're having this nice little conversation, master and student. And then here comes, uh, Mr. Well, he's masked in one part of the movie when they're having this big meeting and you don't know who it is. But Mm -hmm. if you look at the clothing, you can tell who it is. Yeah. Um, But uh, yeah. So, you know, he comes limping up at the end and like you didn't know that I was part of the Eagle Call school and I um, I poisoned you. But the funny thing is that they weren't poisoned at all because they don't like hot tea yeah. <laughs> and that's what saves them. He switches out cool tea for hot tea and he drank the hot tea. So it was funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like that. Scene. And the first time I ever saw this movie, I remember being really pissed because it was like they beat the bad guy and then it looks like they've been poisoned and they're going to die. And it's sort of like a maniacal trick ending. Do you know what I mean? But, uh, and I like how they played into it, though. Like they yeah. weren't going to die. Yeah, you think? Well, you think they're going to die? Like, because because it's a comedy, so even though they're they're doing it in a goofy way, that seems like it might actually how it might actually play out in this movie if somebody gets poisoned. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I like that. What now? We I mentioned the Russian fighter. What did you think of him and his whole priest routine that he had? He was more annoying than anything <laughs> to me. <laughs> You know how I am. Um, he was just... I don't, I don't... I could see the movie working without him being there, mm-hmm. except for, you know, the scene where him and Jackie's master are knocking on doors mm-hmm. uh, and to... Well, Jackie's master is trying to avoid him and he's trying to, I guess, figure out who he is. But, um, yeah, I really think the movie could have done well without him. He didn't make that much of an impression. I mean, my favorite scene was of his was the madam trying to drag him into the yeah. brothel. Yeah, I kind of like how, I like what he adds to the movie. I like that that is there. So, so they go, you know, they, again, it's all for laughs, but like when he, when he tells everybody to stop fighting, do you know what I mean? And all that. And like, mm-hmm. you know, they, they really play up the 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 disguise that he's in up until you know it's revealed that he's something more um and and i like some of the dialogue that that happens with him but but it's just that mainly it's that you know i'm a fighter from russia scenes you know with the dubbing the dub version of that you know always kind of makes me laugh a little bit um so who did did we not talk about yet um what what did you think of the uh, like? What was your favorite fight sequence in the whole movie? It would have to be the end between Jackie and um, and Huang Zheng Li. I think that was my favorite because it com- combined. Well, you got to see all of it in action: the eagle's claw, the snake fist. And um, the cat's claw or whatever. 
but they ended up renaming it at the very end as Snake in the Eagle's Shadow. And you got those wonderful cat noises anytime Jackie leapt in yes. the air. With... <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it adds an element. I, I, I like that fight scene, too. I like that one. I like... Um, I like the one when the what is it the 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 provincial champion comes to challenge them. I like that fight sequence. Right. Um, I like the one between him and Jackie Chan's adoptive master, the one who took him in. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that that's that's what I'm talking about. That that one, um, that that part of that fight sequence right. is, is enjoyable, and also the first fight scene. Um, with um the the eagle claw master and jackie chan i thought were was also uh because there's so much exposition going on in that scene do you know what I mean? there's so much mm-hmm. dialogue and stuff and i thought that their conversation was very interesting as they're fighting you know and, it, and it's not it's not presented as a lethal fight it's he's he's pretending to be another master in the snake sex so it, it, it you know it, it uh you know but i just like the conversation with the fighting there um and also when uh when pai ching tian teaches uh jackie chan's character the uh uh the very first time when he goes to defend him in the street and he mm-hmm. and he's doing like little things like you know hitting him in the back of the leg to make him kick and you know like like if he's got a stick he'll tap the back of the stick to make him hit something you know that that scene i thought was pretty fun too oh in the bowl where um Je- uh, uh, Pai Chang Tian is teaching him, but not necessarily teaching him. Not not directly teaching him, but you know, he tells him to get the bowl. Yeah, and then he and then he puts the footprints on the ground the next day. Yeah, I li- I like that. I like. I mean, again, it's not super realistic because he he's, he ends up through these footprints on the ground. He ends up doing a lot of elaborations that you wouldn't think you would intuit from from the footprints and the instructions that he got but but he was remembering what his what he had done the day before so oh no he, that he, that i remember because i remember the scenes where you see him visualizing what he was doing but there are a couple of moves in there that just seem like he was adding to it yeah like i don't know it just seemed like that you know it seemed i mean again but i like it i like the way it's packaged and i i i, I think it's like a i don't know it's 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 kind of a mr miyagi type style of teaching where it's not entirely direct so you don't even know you're learning necessarily at first right and i like that i think that i think that adds in fact this i think i think the this this character kind of reminds me a lot of miyagi in a lot of ways for some reason i often wonder if this was a film that informed that movie i don't know you know but I, i've always been curious um I like that what do you think of the other training sequence in the woods when he's actually learning the style properly I thought they were good. I I like training sequences in films. I just don't like them to last forever, and these okay. didn't last forever. But I liked when he was uh, Jackie was stretched out, and his um, teacher was sitting on him, and he had to bend um, up and then down, bend up and down, and he got lazy, so he took his little pipe and like poked him. Now, 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 this leads to a natural question, which is, what 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 do you do you think given that you have a somewhat positive reaction to this movie do you think that you would be interested in seeing the drunken master film that follows it the original drunken yes. master okay because i'd be very interested in your response to that film um and i think generally a lot of i think that's a more palatable movie for most people do you know what i mean because it, mm-hmm. it it's just it just doesn't have the same look as this one um so so, is there anything else we want to talk about the movie before we get to ratings and recommendations? Yeah. There was music in this movie that just was off for me, that just seemed like weird choices. Like when uh, Jackie was in doing his chores and the, and the bad teacher was, you know, trying to put the flower prints. That's the music the from the intro. That's the music from the intro, I think. The, it was so techy. Was it that, or was it the, was it the piano? Was it the piano going up and down the keys? Because there were two different I, musics that they used. In no, this was, 
I don't know. To me, it was too techno electronic. Yeah, that's that's and the intro just, music. That I got to admit, just way too weird for me when I, it pops up in the movie. And I, I know some people like it, but to me, it just seems so out of place in this movie. I think it lands a little differently if you see it in the intro first. But I I understand what you're saying. But I love that music. I think it's um. I, I, I totally get why you don't like it because it's not it, it's very it's very dated it's like this movie came out in 1978 and this sounds like stuff from 1978 that just never made it to the following year do you know what I mean it's got that right. kind of a sound to it but I really like it because I associate it with that opening sequence and I like the opening sequence and even though it's a it's it's an you know it's a very weird sort of synth kind of thing they have going uh I like the underlying melody of it. Um, there's another sound choice they made too. There's like a choral music that they play for emotional weight during the film. Do you know the scenes I'm talking about? Like wherever there's something dramatic going on, you hear like this choral music in the background. Yeah, I don't think I noticed that. Okay. It didn't yeah. stand out. I... Like the rest of the movie was fine, and mm -hmm. except for when they played the the syntho music, it was just kind of. <laughs> just off for me i was like why would they put that there it just i don't know it just was not me not I, I i really like i like all the music in this movie even the piano going up and down the keys when the guy's sliding on the ground do you know, like even that i like and even there's one scene where they're like they're doing way too many drums and horns or something to build suspense, do you know what I mean? Where it's like going bum 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 bum, and it's almost like out of a parody. They're doing it so much, but I like that. I just love the feel of the film from the music. Um, so I will, I will tell you, I, I'm pretty sure Drunken Master has better music overall. I think you'll enjoy the the music from that film more if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so so why don't we go on to ratings and recommendation? And uh, we're gonna do one through five. Why don't you go first? Because you know, you, uh, you know, we probably know what I think of it, but I think it's more important to get your your assessment of this one. No halves, these. Mm. I have to keep reminding myself this. Um, I would give it. Oh, I so don't want to give it a four because <laughs> I I know there's something out there better than this. Um, I'm gonna give it a three. Okay, that's fine. Just because it's uh, it's uh, enjoyable, and I and especially enjoyed the fight scenes, and the acting was great. Um, the music was a bit weird, so I guess that knocks it down mm -hmm. one point. But I I like the movie. I would watch it again. Okay. I would definitely watch it again, yeah. and I want to see the intro. And because I miss. What was that? I, I, you just broke up for a minute there. Oh, I'm sorry. I said um, because I missed the intro, I'm just going to give it a three. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. I um, so I realize that this will probably not be a good rating for a lot of people. Like a lot of people might see this and do you really think it was that high? But I'm going to give it a five. And I'm going to, you know, and again, it's my, a very biased five. I admit. But to me, this is just like the pinnacle of martial arts movies experience. This is exactly, uh, you know, all the stuff that I like. It's it's fun. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's obviously not like a super serious movie. So it's not gonna. It doesn't have gloss. It doesn't. You know, not everything is perfectly packaged and wrapped up in a bow. Some of the stuff. It's got rough edges, but the rough edges are one of the things that make it so charming, and. And, 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 and it's also just one of these movies I've seen, like, if, if I, like, when we talked about Hero Shendo Tears, I had mentioned when I saw that movie, I had to keep putting it back in and watching it and watching it and watching it. And when I first saw Snake of the Eagle's Shadow, that's all I could do was watch this movie. Do you know what I mean? I just, I just, mm -hmm. I just, I just fell in love with this film. And, and I, I feel like, um, you know, that alone is, uh, an indication that it had moved me in some way. Do you know what I mean? And, and in fact, I used to spend, there was, there was a period where I, you know, I, I, I used to, you know, uh, you know, just in, in, enjoy watching it like almost every night. Do you know what I mean? Drinking Heineken. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's just one of these films where it's, you know, I, 
I, I it's it's so easy to watch. And again, I don't you know I I, I don't you know I. I you know, I will go long periods without watching it. Like I, I think I, I did this. I, I did a, I had a conversation with this movie with Joel not too long ago, and that was the first time I had seen it in maybe eight years or so. I think so. There had been a big gap, but it's just always nice to go back to. It's like you know any classic movie that you know, like The Wizard of Oz or Spartacus or something like that, where you just go back to it and it just you know it just feels right. So uh, you know, I I I think this is just a towering movie in the genre for me. This, this, uh, you know, even more so than the drunken master film, do you know what I mean? Which I think a lot, a lot of people will like that one more, but this is the one that for me is, it's like the iconic martial arts comedy movie. Um, so yeah. So again, this is one that you might have a little trouble finding, I think, right? Like it's not necessarily available on streaming services without paying money or something like that. So uh, if you can get it on DVD, I do think it's worth it. But, you know, just just be aware. It might not be as easy as some of our other movie recommendations. Um, and, yeah, so I guess we'll, we'll, uh, we'll head out. And uh, until next time, we will talk to you later. <laughs>